And so I said, okay. So we go down for breakfast and I didn't eat breakfast because I couldn't, I couldn't eat anything. Like I had no appetite, like I couldn't stomach anything. And so I go down for breakfast and I sat at the table because we couldn't sit in the dorm while breakfast was going on. And so after breakfast was over, I go up to the guard desk and I said, hey, can you let me know why I'm in here? I swear to God on my life. They literally, the lady told me, she said, you're in here for R-A-P-E. And my, like, I, my body went into this, like, heat. And I almost passed out. And the guard had to catch me. Um, she called other inmates to help catch me. <laughs> um, I literally just almost lost, lost it. Um, so I ended up, um, asking the guard if I can make a phone call. She was like, not right now. Cause I needed to call my dad. Um, so she told me not right now, and <laughs> so, because I didn't, so I went to her, um, after breakfast and after everything was cleaned, and I asked her again, and she was like, no. You can't make a phone call because you didn't eat anything. She was like, you carrying a child. She was like, you carrying a child. And so, so I had this, that my cellmate, she kept talking to me and I didn't want to talk, but she was like, um, did, did, she was like, um, what did she say? And I didn't tell her what she said, but I told her I need to make a phone call, but they won't let me make a phone call because I didn't eat. She was like, well, just eat doing, she was like, when lunchtime comes, just eat something so you can make a phone call. And so I still ended up not eating because like I said, like I couldn't stomach anything. Like I literally went to my dorm. And I vomited and I didn't have no food in me. And so um, she was like, if if the guards see you vomiting, they're going to lock you down. They're going to lock you down. And so because I didn't eat a second time, the guard called me. She was like, come with me. And they put me in this room where it was only me. Like, I, like nobody else was in there. It was just a bed, a mattress. And a toilet it was no blanket it was nothing and then so I some moments went by and I asked her, I said why am I in here like why did you move me from up there to in here and so she was like because you're pregnant and you're not eating and we need to put you on suicide watch to make sure you're not harmful and I told her I'm not harmful like I don't like I'm not gonna harm myself and so she was like, we, we don't know that because, like, you're carrying a child. We need you to eat something. So, during dinner time, they put my tray in the, in the little, and it's like this little slot on the door. They pushed my, my tray through the slot, and I still couldn't eat anything. And so, when she came to the door, she was like, ma'am, if you don't eat, we're going to move you somewhere else you don't want to be. And so, um... I, the only thing I ate was, it was a cookie on the plate. I ate a cookie and I drank some milk. And so when she came back, she was like, well, at least that's better than something, better than nothing. She was like, but and when breakfast time come around, you need to eat because I don't want to put you in, the, in down in the other room because you're pregnant and I don't want to do that to you. And so when breakfast came around, they put my tray in there and I didn't think to flush the food. If I had a thought about it, I would have. But um, I ended up eating some of the eggs. I ended up eating uh, just a little bit and I drank some milk. So for lunch, 
I ended up eating a little bit and I still and I drank some milk because I was eating a little bit of time uh, she told me she was like you can go ahead and come out uh, so they moved me into a different cell but I had a different cellmate I wasn't in the same cell um so when I got out I asked her if I could make a phone call again she was like I could make a phone call so I ended up calling my dad <clears throat> and when I called my dad I was like daddy guess what they got me in here for and <clears throat> and so he was like what and I was like they got me in here for R-A-P-E and my dad literally went off on the phone like he went off he was like hang this damn phone up I'm gonna call your attorney and I don't know who he, who he talked to but um I remember calling my dad back and they had removed that from my record and they put on their aggravated child abuse um so I told my dad I said I didn't abuse her and my dad was like don't worry about that we'll worry about that later so then the weekend came around and it was visitation time so um they called my name and they was like you got a visit and so when I went and I went in the room and sat down it was my dad my dad was coming up and so I talked to my dad for a moment and he let me know that the guy that I was dating at the time that I dated <laughs> at the time uh, he was like he's uh, he's here but don't talk to him and so I was like why is he here and so I said I don't want to visit with him I don't want him here and my dad was like I tried to tell them that but um, they said that you have to make the decision for him not to be here and so I told the guard that brought me up he was standing next to me over by the other door and I told him I said sir I don't want to see the guy that's down there I don't want to see him I don't want him here I don't want I don't want to visit with him and so um he was like we will he was like I'll tell them like I'll, I'll send the message down I'm not sure to this day if he sent the message down but they ended up letting him come up anyway so when my dad left so when he sat down i didn't say nothing i just basically just stared at him like <sighs> enraged and so he started talking he was like hey like like nothing happened he was like hey how you doing and in the moment i'm trying to figure out are you nuts and I still didn't say nothing because I remember my dad saying not to say, not to say nothing. So he's still talking. He was like, why you ain't talking? And so I asked him, I said, what did you do to my baby? And so he goes to um, doing all this weird stuff. You're not going to sit here and try to put that on me. You did that and blah, blah, blah. Like he just really just started just all this right here. And so I be quiet. And I stared at him. And in my head, the only thing I could think of is when I get out of here. When I get out of here, that's all I could think of. So, after three weeks passed by, my daddy ended up bonding me out because he didn't want me to have a baby in jail. So, when I got home, um, I had to basically had to go get my stuff. Uh, from him, I had to get my phone and I had to get uh, other important stuff that I had left there. Um, my dad didn't go with me because I can't say why, but my dad didn't go with me. If you if you got a daughter, then you know if this was my daughter, what I would do. So that my basically my dad didn't go with me. He just basically um, called my phone and he stayed on the phone with me to make sure that I was safe uh, while... I was on my way to get pick up my stuff but I didn't go to the house I had him to meet me at a gas station because I didn't want to go to the house and so when I get to the gas station he gets out of the car and he just talking I'm not saying anything he just talking and and he was like you want to leave me because of something you did he just kept saying stuff like that and then so he was throwing my stuff on the ground. So I'm I'm pregnant, lifting big bags to put in my car. And he just constantly just, just losing it. And so 
my dad was like in my ear my dad was like don't say nothing just let him talk don't say nothing 